Hi, my name's Bob Grunier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So this is the full day experiment yesterday uh, on the unmodified uh, DeWalt generator that we are going to use to do a test of a thunderstorm generator on. And you can see here that it was started on the 10th of May 2024, 9.31.58. And you've got a little bit over eight hours of experimentation here. The first section here is uh, getting the Cirrus 2 mass spectrometer up to uh, uh, baseline uh, on the air. And as you go along there, you can see that the air is actually down here. And what you're looking at there is actually the signature of clean, fresh uh, Santa Cruz air. Okay, so you've got uh, mass 14, nitrogen atom uh, 15 likely uh, the heavier nitrogen um, 16 oxygen 17 OH uh, 18 H2O uh, you have uh, 28 here is N2 uh, 29 maybe mixtures uh, over here you've got um, Mass 40 is argon, and uh, uh, I think at 32 here you have O2, and all the way over here you've got 44. And this is a logarithmic scale, so you can see how ridiculously low the amount of CO2 is in the atmosphere. So that's that. And as we go through, these spikes are when we're, like th this one here is where we first um, attempted to add a smoke filter. So we have the Cirrus 2 here. And we've got sampling port four, and for several hours we've been taking a background of the air. And at the end of that, we have placed some of these raw natural unrefined cotton filters, as you can see there. And around that, we're going to put this alumina felt. So the alumina felt is effectively the high temperature thing going on here. And this is the filter to try and get rid of any P10 particles and stuff. Large lumps of carbon we don't want going into the Cirrus 2. This was the uh, alumina felt to try and hold it on. So there it is, the finished assembly uh, with the smoke filter in there and the alumina felt. That's going into port 4 over here on the Cirrus 2. My spec. And this was uh, turning the engine on for the first time. So, in theory, you're going to fire it up for the first time, yeah? Yep, yeah, we haven't even turned it on yet, so we got gas in it and oil, so let's uh, see what it wants to do. Let's see what it does. It's got an electric start. If you move that, it's going to move everything off this end. It didn't give my, didn't think this would go. Cooling right into the, into the bush here. <clears throat> Do you need to turn the idle control on or the run on over here? No. Let's run. Uh, I th I, this is all I think the board going out. I don't know if this affects the actual idle. Effect. Yeah. And to show that this is brand new, we have it on 0.0, .0 hours there. <clears throat> That flew out. Yeah. Okay, we might have to tie this on with wire.
does turn it off. If you go here, you can see what happens is that as soon as you turn the engine on, you really don't have uh, fresh air, right? So when you turn it on quickly, you get a whole bunch of unburnt hydrocarbons. That's all those signatures. I think um, petrol is 117 or something, that's number. You also get some hydrogen down here, and the hydrogen there is uh, likely to be unburnt hydrocarbons from there uh, being split in the filament in the mass spectrometer. And as you go through, we tried a number of different ways to try and attach the um, filter. So we now have it so that it's looking at the exhaust there. And going into the port four, I'm gonna turn it on now. All right, so I guess that needs to be on run. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, go for it. got some punch hasn't it okay so it's uh, attempt three to run this uh, we've got a strap across the top of the sampling port and hopefully it will stay in position this time <clears throat> uh, do you want to maybe just get a hand on the front just so it doesn't get tugged yeah Right, so there we go. All right, well, we'll have to try that again. So I'm gonna dunk that in some water. Look at that, smoking, all right. We're on attempt four now uh, because it just came straight off. And uh, eventually we got it working. And here, when it's under idle, you can see you do definitely do get more CO2 and those kind of things up this end. So this is under idle over here. So uh, you can see the CO2 goes from diddly squat here to quite a lot, um, but when it's on idle, you don't see any of the unburnt hydrocarbons, okay? Uh, you do on switch on, like there, that's switch on, so you get unburnt hydrocarbons there, but you know, the um, engine warms up and it starts working and regulating, and then you get a nice clean burn. And then over here, you get uh, a clean burn again, now what happened over here is um, we attached a load. Um, so I think, well, where is this? Uh, so th we had to put a new piece of nickel mesh over it to make it work uh, without the filter falling apart. This is to stop large particulates going into the mass spectrometer and clogging up the pipe and the actual uh, drift tube. So the flash arrestor's back on. So this is absolutely stock. And now we have Mark IV sampling arrangement here with nickel 200 mesh here and alumina foam behind. And hopefully this will stop the blast wave coming out from here and causing the foam, the alumina foam. And we also had this disaster where the uh, <laughs> screwdriver screwed up the previous attempt to putting some foam, uh, foam on there. And this is what happened to the last one. It basically blew through everything apart from the very last bit. So that's as it is. We shall see if this fares any better. Um, and then here we added a 1.5 kilowatt heater. Okay, a um, sort of radiator. I can show you that here. It's down here, that's the radiator there. Um, and when the radiator was on, it went from um, so where's that radiator? That's the one kilowatt heater, 1.5 kilowatt heater. So when we're there, there's not so many um, hydrocarbons. Uh, but over here, after the heater is added, we've got quite a few hydrocarbons in there. Uh, there's a couple of little drops down. Uh, we have a question as to why that might be. But uh, you still see plenty of hydrocarbons and also hydrogen probably coming from that.
uh, and then we turn off and then it drips drifts down to uh, approximation of the original starting air with a bit of contamination but here we're, we're close down to the original air over here compared to uh, here there's a little bit of difference there but so that's that and so what we're going to do what, what what I'll be looking for really is when it's under load do we have less of these unburnt hydrocarbons here uh, coming out do we we do we still detect those if so uh, if uh, you know it's not doing its job if we don't uh, see those so much then one could argue it is doing a little bit of cleaning potentially with other reservations aside um, and then you know do we see any other things interesting going on down here at the lower levels so I'll take you out and you can see the engine out here as it's being modified so here we go uh, there's a thunderstorm generator on it and it is going down there this will be where we are doing our exhaust sampling and come over here this is the bubbler okay and that's the uh, feed in with the uh, UV air energizer uh, not ionizer because it's not high enough energy uh, and come down here and the bubbles come around here around there and then into the uh, heat exchanger part of the thunderstorm generator vortex in around there up and then uh, out here and into the manifold uh, via this uh, little custom block that's inserted in there and then get through the engine and then out through the manifold here and then down 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 and out of that so down vortex 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 and, and likely a lot of vortex out of there and we'll be doing a whole bunch of tests at this end simple tests and complicated tests which might reveal a lot about this device so there you are and uh, there is Phil on the build now uh, people want to know what engine it is that's being used it is the DeWalt DXGNR6500 and it certainly seems to be one of the better ones to make a nice clean build as you can see Phil unfortunately didn't have a chance to get the angle grinder out and chop it up and there's no hotel room to do that in this time right there's really no point <laughs> so thank you very much for your time I'll see you in the next video